OK, so one thing you'll be able to tell is that Samir and I didn't like seamlessly prepare our presentations together. Um, but they are sort of on the same topic. And they are kind of questions and answers, I think, that may be related. So I was ideally hoping that somebody from Unruly would speak about this who was, has actually been doing the work. But everybody went, no. Uh, so I said, all right, well, I'll talk about it then. So I'm going to talk about it more in terms of like thinking about processes around how you might structure trying to address infrastructure debt, because that's definitely what we've been trying to do over a number of years. So I work here at Unruly. I work downstairs with product development teams. I work as a coach. Um, and we use extreme programming. Now, one of the things... If anybody, who's re read Extreme Programming Explained? Right, how much does it say about infrastructure in there? <laughs> like pretty much zero or nothing? How much does it say about like having any kind of environment where there's more than one team? Nothing. Okay, so there would no bit not be a need for shared infrastructure because you, you're just like the team that has their infrastructure. But once you start being several teams and you kind of say it would be kind of cool if we don't solve the same problem in different ways and then have to have complicated things when we swap teams and stuff. So what we've been doing, because we've been doing XP from the beginning, we were using XP from 2006 here, is that first of all, we had a single small team and then they gradually grew. And while they were building some live products, they also built bits of infrastructure. But I think there was a tricky thing was that they didn't always think about the infrastructure as being production code. So one of the things that I would encourage you to think about is that infrastructure is production code. And pretty much you should think about the same XP practices applying as you would for normal features. So you would think about having scripts that have tests. And um, if you have like maybe a hundred scripts for doing things, maybe you need to refactor them and make them easy to find. And, you know, just like you would think about if you had loads and loads of code that you didn't know where it all was. And uh, you perhaps need to think about some of the collaborative practices in XP of, you know, using pairing and knowledge sharing, practicing collective code ownership. And that's, I think, where it becomes tricky because one of the topics that Samir touched on was... Well, I guess if to be a sysadmin, you have become a deep specialist. You have learnt lots about how things work. And although it'd be nice to think, right, I'm a Java developer and how hard can sysadmin be? You know, I can just learn about it. It takes a long time to acquire that knowledge. And so that really it's not easy to become uh, even a sort of uh, barely adequate sysadmin through just trying to learn on the job. And so one of the things that we tried here is to uh, hire in um, security and reliability engineers to work with us, but one of their objectives is to try to help the normal developers in the team to understand more about what they're doing and make sensible choices. Um, so thinking about debt, like you can't continually acquire debt, you have to try and make plans for paying it back, not just hoping that one day, someday, you'll get round to fixing everything. Um, now, Alex and Benji are laughing. This is because they know how slow this is. And these are pennies, or po po possibly euros. But then it, it's after you've been running for quite a number of years, you have a lot of things you need to clean up. Uh, and it takes a while. So you really need to make a sort of plan for how you're going to do that. Uh, this is a, a poster from a session we had in this room uh, in 2013, so a while ago. And we talked, and we were really, we'd, we'd hired a guy, Stan, who's now lo no, no longer working with us, but uh, he helped us to identify the different areas of infrastructure debt that we had. So there were things around configuration management, there were things about monitoring, security, and things around uh, deploying applications and that kind of stuff. 
So there's quite a lot of things where we could do with rationalising, improving, developing tests around, and you start to think, oh my goodness, that's quite a lot of work. And at the same time, we're working in a business which is expecting us to turn around lots of features and uh, generate money to pay everybody else who works in the business. So uh, what we thought is that we would need to develop a system where there were people kind of working on infrastructure and at the same time, the teams were still building features. We didn't think we could just afford to say, right, stop there. We're just sorting out the infrastructure. We needed to have a way where teams will be building inf our, our normal features, maintaining our normal products at the same time as having some kind of effort to improve our infrastructure and try and tackle some of our in infrastructure debt. So what we did was we asked people who would like to be involved. Um, Alex, you're on here, um, and Benji's on here, and other people on here. I'm also on there. I've put not interesting to me. Um, uh, the, because ba basically, although I think it's a good thing to happen, I don't want to be at the forefront of trying to sort out the technical debt. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it's great to step back and let others be involved. Um, but uh, now, now I want to say a little bit about our team structure to try and explain a little bit because we probably organised differently than the picture that Samir drew at first. Remember he kind of had a team over a wall who knew what they were doing and a team who were developing features and there was kind of throwing features over the wall and then you kind of evaporated the wall. Um, we're not really quite organised like that. So what we are, for the first thing is we are not a massive company. So we are not a huge bank. We are not, we are a smallish startup. So we have four teams and they have three to four people in those teams, three to four developers. And we have a bunch of specialists who sort of float around between those teams. And I'm one of those specialists. Um, and our security and reliability engineers are also specialists who are going to be floating between the teams, but with the objective of helping the developers within those teams understand more about what they're doing and the choices they're making. So making informed choices. And I've highlighted these yellow faces because the yellow people, there are people in different teams who are working on the infrastructure efforts. So there's a team rep in each team apart from this temporary team, which we haven't really decided what we're doing about yet. Um, and the idea is that anyone, although we have a team rep, that doesn't mean the team rep does all the infrastructure work. What we do is the team rep is the person saying, from our team, we are responsible for thinking what stories and what tasks we need to improve the infrastructure, and then what we try to do is arrange time every month when we're actually trying to pay down that technical debt and, and try and improve it. So then we have to do a boring thing. Boring thing is we have to list all the things that we want to fix and try and think about what they really are and break them down into tasks that could be done in a few days and agree what things have been done and what things haven't been done. It's very familiar, the kind of thing you might do with stories. But one thing is different about this is we are not prioritising those with the business. We are not sitting down and saying, do you want this feature or do you want infrastructure debt to be paid down? We're saying infrastructure debt is being paid down at this rate and that's not a business decision. That's something we need to do to carry on being able to do feature, feature development. Uh, so then we, the, the, all these photographs... Alex and Benji probably cringing. They're all really ancient photographs because I didn't want to give away what features we're currently developing now or anything like that, even though you could go and have a look downstairs. Um, <laughs> but what we did, for example, is we thought, I know we'll get... So the, the first deal that we were able to broker was we would get three pair days a month, which would be dedicated to working on the infrastructure backlog. Plus we had our security and reliability engineer who was working on that as well. So the idea was we were kind of paying it down at that level. But we did have some retrospectives. And one of the things we found time and time again, people go, oh, is it really that day when we have to do those tasks? 
but today's not really a good day for our team. Um, somebody's out or there's this re really urgent feature we need to work on and stuff. So it was really hard to try and get people to not defer and de say, oh, well, it's, it's just like if somebody was paying off a loan and they wanted a loan holiday and they wanted another loan holiday. It's like, no, you can't keep doing that. Um, so one change we did make is we made the days to be consecutive days. And then we said, well, also, so, you know, it would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we would agree who, which teams would be giving which pairs on which days. And even then, you would still get the teams going, oh, but it is really, really urgent, and we really, really need to defer it just one more day, or let's push them along a bit. So it was a bit of a battle. And then the other thing that was a bit of a battle was that, ultimately, to improve the infrastructure, you want to do some of the strategic work, uh, but it's very easy to get bogged down in the tactical tasks that need doing. And also what you find is even though the team should be staying on top of the tactical things that need doing from their team's perspective, they quite often don't. And then when it comes, although it's nice that everybody can volunteer to be involved and like to be involved, it very easily can be, oh, who will be working on this work today? and a bit of a looking around and thinking, who is the weakest possible victim who can work on this? Uh, I, and everybody kind of steps, takes a step backwards, and then it's suddenly somebody's doing it. Who knows nothing about it? So that if you have the idea that you want to improve uh, knowledge within the teams, to improve and reduce your infrastructure debt, there needs to be a little bit of continuity of knowledge, and it needs to be not just like, oh, well, that person didn't say no. So they're it. Uh, so we had those kinds of issues. Um, one of the things that has helped a little bit, and one of the things that we have changed a little bit, is that instead of doing, um, you know, maybe, to, to use fake names, Peter and Paul pair one day, and then Paul pairs with Mary the next day, and then Mary pairs with Peter the next day. Instead of doing that, we have tried to say, well, let's try and get more... Uh, in mob programming and getting people working together and for a longer period of time. So instead of doing the three days a month, we've batched those days up and we've said, let's actually run a period which is a bit more like an iteration where we have three people available, they're the same three people and they work through it continuously and then we switch and we try that again. I'm not saying that this is the answer because it doesn't always work and we've only tried it twice so far, three times. Um, so what I'm trying to really get at is just that if you have infrastructure debt, you need to make uh, a debt repayment plan uh, and uh, you need to try and stick to your debt repayment plan even when it feels like um, there's so many other pressures in the business. Because uh, I think, and I think one of the hardest things is that it's so easy to feel pressured to defer um, things just for one more day or one more week. And then what you're doing is you're actually slowing yourselves down further and further and further. So it's really something you need to try and figure out a protected way of doing the time. So uh, and when I'm talking about infrastructure debt, I'm not talking about technical debt. I'm not talking about... Uh, things that the team needs to take care of on its own. I'm really talking about shared infrastructure and uh, trying to make sure that we are actually paying attention to that. So that's all I had to say. So thanks.